Today's story is another fairy tale written by Terry Jones. The Wind Ghosts When the wind is howling round the house and tearing at the clouds, our ears are filled with noise. Chimney pots rattle, doors bang, windows shake. But in between the blasts, when the wind is still for a moment, you can sometimes hear very faintly the pitter-patter footsteps of the ghosts who follow the wind. Here is the story of one such ghost. Once there were two friends who set off to seek their fortunes. On the first day, they came to a wide river and did not know how to get across. So they walked along the river bank until they came to a little tumble-down hut where an old woman was sitting making a necklace of bones. How do we get across this river, old woman, they asked. The old woman kept on threading the bones on the string as if they were beads and said, there are two ways to cross the river. One is free and one will cost you. How can that be, asked the two friends. Well, said the old woman, one way is to swim across. That's free. The other way is to take the boat that leaves from here at midnight, but that will cost you. For once you step on board, you must give the boatman whatever he asks for. I don't want to get wet, said the first friend whose name was Jonathan. I'll take the boat. Who knows what the boatman might ask for, said David. I'll swim. So the two friends agreed to meet the next day on the other side. Then David tied all his belongings to his shirt and put them on his head and swam across. It was a wide river, and the current took him a long way downstream, but eventually he got to the other side. There he lit a fire and waited until his friend Jonathan arrived. Well, asked David, what did the boatman ask for? Oh, he wanted the moon, said Jonathan. So what did you give him, asked David. Oh, I just got out my cup and dipped it into the river and handed it to him as that. When he looked into it, so that when he looked into it, there was the moon shining up at him. Well, the two friends went on their way, and on the second day, they came to a deep, deep chasm. There they found a little old man sitting outside a cave. How do we get across the chasm, they asked. There are two ways, said the little old man. One way will take a minute, the other way will take a month. How can that be, they asked. Well, one way is to walk all around the edge of the chasm, and that will take you a month, said the little old man. The other way is to ask the eagle that lives on this mountain to give you a ride on his back. But if he does, you must answer any questions he any question he asks you as you fly over. Otherwise, he will drop you into the chasm. I'm not going to risk that, said David. I'll walk around the edge even it takes even if it takes a month. I can answer any question, said Jonathan. I'll fly on the eagle's back. So the two friends agreed to meet in a month's time. David walked and walked for a whole month, and eventually he reached a spot on the other side of the chasm where they had agreed to meet. And there, sure enough, was his friend Jonathan waiting for him. What was the eagle's question, asked David. Oh, he wanted to know where he could always find the summer sun in midwinter, said Jonathan. What did you tell him, asked David. Oh, I told him to find one blade of grass, for you must know that all plants store the summer sun in their leaves. And there's a picture of the old man, the chasm, the two boys, and the eagle. So the two friends went on their way until they came to the shore of a sea. There they found an old sailor, so they asked him how they could cross the sea. There are two ways, said the sailor. One way is dangerous, the other way is safe. How can that be, they asked. One way is to sail across on a boat. 
that will be full of danger, for the sea is deep and there are storms and high waves and sea monsters. The other way is to go to the wizard of the sea and ask him to get you across by magic. That is quite safe, but with this warning, you will have to do whatever the wizard of the sea wants first, or else you will never get across at all. I will sail across, said David, for I would rather face the dangers of the sea than put myself in the wizard's hands. I can do whatever the wizard asks me to do, said Jonathan, so I'll go by magic. And Jonathan went to the wizard and swore to do whatever the wizard asked of him. There's only one thing you need to do for me, said the wizard, and that's not so difficult for someone who can give the moon away and who knows where to find the summer sun in midwinter. What is it I must do, asked Jonathan. You must catch the wind, said the wizard, and just then a breeze blew across the shore and Jonathan set off after it. Meanwhile, David had built himself a boat. He spread his sail, and the wind blew him across the ocean. Sometimes the wind blew up a storm, and sometimes it blew him the wrong way, and he fought with the rain and the cold and the sea monsters. But at length, he got to the other side. There he built a windmill, and the wind turned the sails of the mill, and he became a miller. He never grew rich, but he was never poor, and, for all I know, he was happy enough. Jonathan, however, never was able to catch the wind, and to this day he chases after it, and in between the blusts of a storm you may hear the pitter-patter of his footsteps. He cannot stop and he cannot catch it, for he is now a wind ghost, and yet, for all I know, he too is happy enough in his own way. <laughs>